In this video, we want to look at how to determine whether two lines intersect or not. Okay, so let's say I come up with two lines, right? So let's call L1 the equation R equals, I'm just going to come up with numbers, so 2, 5, minus 3, plus lambda times 3, 7, minus 5. And let's have L2 being r equals 2, 1, 1, plus mu times minus 3, minus 2, uh, 9. Okay, so here are my two equations of lines. Now, if this was 2D, right, um, and the gradients are different, then yes, they are definitely going to intersect. However, in three dimensions, that is definitely not a given. OK, so because I've just come up with these numbers off the top of my head, the likelihood of these two lines intersecting um, is quite unlikely. OK, so how can we actually determine whether they do intersect or not? Well, remember that R here represents x, y, z. So R is effectively saying, right, any point that is on the line is governed by this. So if they are to be both the same, that they intersect at one point, then those R's have to be the same at that point. So that means we can put one equation equal to the other, as you might have expected we would do. So that's the first one, and we're going to put that equal to... 2, 1, 1, plus mu, times minus 3, minus 2, 9. Now what this gives us is a top row, middle row, and bottom row. So I can write down three equations. 2 plus 3 lambda is equal to 2 take away 3 mu, sorry. So that's our top row. The middle row, we've got 5 plus 7 lambda is equal to 1 take away 2 mu. And the bottom row, we've got minus 3 take away 5 lambda is equal to 1 plus 9 mu. Now, the first equation here, so let's call this number 1, that number 2 and that number 3. So for equation number 1, we can subtract 2 from both sides and simplify this, and then divide through by 3, and we can say that lambda must be equal to minus mu. OK? So if that's the case, I can then substitute that into one of these two other equations. So let's say I substitute that into equation 2, and say uh, 5 plus 7 lambda... Well, actually, I can replace, I'll replace the lambda with mu. So 5 take away 7 mu would be equal to 1 take away 2 mu. OK, so subtract 1 from both sides, add 7 mu to both sides. And so mu would have to be 4 fifths. And that implies that lambda would have to be minus 4 fifths. OK, so what we've done is we have solved the simultaneous equations for 1 and 2. We've got a value for lambda, we've got a value for mu. Now we must check it in equation 3. OK, so if it works in equation 3, then they intersect. If it doesn't work, it doesn't intersect. OK, so for equation 3, we've got a left-hand side which is minus 3 take away 5 lambda. So minus 3 take away 5 times minus 4 fifths. So minus 5 times minus 4 fifths is going to be plus 4. So minus 3 plus 4 is 1. Now the right-hand side is 1 plus 9 mu. So 1 plus 9 lots of 4 fifths. 
We can already see this isn't going to be equal to 1, right? So 1 plus 9 times 4 fifths is 41 fifths. That's not equal to 1. So because the left-hand side is not equal to the right-hand side, this is not consistent. So L1 and L2 do not intersect. OK, so the idea then is that we put the two lines equal to one another. We solve two of the equations and then check it in the third. If it works in the third, then they intersect. If they don't work, then they're not consistent, so they don't intersect. Now, if they had worked, if the left-hand side had been equal to the right-hand side, if they had been consistent, which told us that they would intersect, what we can then do is use the lambda and mu, or just, well, just either the lambda or the mu, and substitute it into the lambda into that one, or the mu into that one, to work out the coordinates of the point of intersection. Okay? And that's the kind of thing that we're going to look at in the next video.